Sims and Lefko, episode 129. I'm literally watching Sims watch film in the 30 seconds before the beat drops of Rod Simba's fire beat. You gotta get it in. I got it. I just wanna, there, there's certain guys I haven't checked out. Who are you watching? You know what bothered me is the guy that questioned in on Facebook Live on Monday, he asked about the J. Ron Brown kid. Yes, the, the linebacker, middle linebacker for the right? So Is he good? He is good. You know, he's really, um, I'm gonna, who's the, the little linebacker that was drafted two years ago, the Chargers guy. I'm blanking on it. Denzel Perryman? There's Denzel Perryman, but there's another linebacker we're missing out that's a smaller guy that was like from Akron or one of those. Mm, I'm blanking on it. I'll look it up. I will. I'll figure it out. I can't remember what it was. But similar. Similar. Undersized linebacker, great speed, great quickness. What team did you say he was on? He's like a Denzel Perryman body build, but he's he's thicker. Man. I mean, he's faster. He's more athletic than a Denzel Perryman. J. Ron Brown. Yeah. Uh, Sir... Do you have any 29s for me? First, I want to say to everybody, I have never been more excited for an NFL season. We are so ready to give you a full season of really intense NFL coverage. And I want to let everybody know right off the gate. Jatavis Brown from Action, remember? That's who it was, yes. Sorry, sorry. Um, For everyone out there that was super excited that we went from one episode a week to two episodes a week, Buckle your frickin' bootstraps, because NFL season, we're going to three podcasts a week. Shazam! For all the production staff that right now is going, what the hell, no one told us this. Don't worry about it. Go at Gabe. Gabe's literally having a heart attack, though. He's like, what? What? I got to sit here with this damn jib I camera? Just, <laughs> I just realized that Sims and I were talking so much on camera. Why aren't we making this into podcasts so that you guys can listen to it on your phones whenever you want? We record Monday's show. That's your Tuesday podcast that's a recap of the weekend then what we're gonna do is we usually do our pick show on Thursday on Facebook live guess what we're just gonna make that our Friday podcast so that you guys have on your phone every single game pick instead of just five games that we did the last season and that allows us on our big Wednesday show the one we're doing right now yep. to do a really deep dive to give you a lot of hidden gems a lot of hidden truths we can really talk football on that Wednesday one so that Tuesday episode will be the recap that Friday episode will be all of the predictions with betting lines okay. very heavily we that, that way we don't have to pick the games and then also pick the betting lines right and then Wednesday we can do our big deep dive that comes out Thursday okay cool. I think it's perfect and Thursday when we pick games we're gonna sit right here and do it like that yes okay cool Really get into Bring it. Bring it out. Let's see if I can beat Lefko for the first time in my Bleacher Report career. So it's been, I beat you three years in a row. Are we, when we do actual. And later in this episode, we will be predicting all of the division winners, the Super Bowl, MVP, Rookie of the Year, all that stuff with a special guest that Sims doesn't know about. What were you going to say? Oh, gosh, you really threw me off there. Good. That's uh-huh. the point of the show. <laughs> Where the hell was I going to go with that? Uh, I don't know what the hell I was going to say. Yes. Oh, wait, so are we going to do our actual picks, though? I might have missed you say that. Like, just picking the winners. You know how last year we'd pick five games? We're not doing that anymore. We're not doing that no, anymore. No. So gonna, I have to gonna, beat you in the gambling the Gambling. Mark. Okay. Gambling is more fun. And I really like your camouflage T-shirt. Yeah, today. Woody You're picked it up so for cool. me. I can barely see you over there. Uh, speaking of that, just as completely random, I went and got coffee today with my main man, Pat Doney. He covers the Cowboys down there for NBC. Give him a follow on Twitter. Uh this is so weird. I, I was ordering, and I got a red eye, which you like, which is coffee and espresso. You get a black eye. I got like a black eye. But I was, they were like, oh, how? they were like, would you uh, hot or cold? And I said, is there a price difference? And she said, yes. I said, which one costs more? She said, the iced black eye cost 75 cents more. I said, why? She goes, the ice. I go, you're charging me 75 cents for ice? For ice when it costs is like one of, those, one of those big bags at the gas stations a dollar. You know what I mean? The this whole is bag. a thing. Ice costs seventy-five cents. Hey, well, by the by the way, he's in town covering the Zeke trial. Right. He firmly believes, and I don't know what information he has, that it's going to get reduced from six games to four games. This is coming out Thursday, so this is going to be dated. Yep. But the interesting thing is. He's talked to a lot of people waiting on the steps, waiting for Zeke to walk by. They're not holding it the same place they held Deflategate and everything else. It's at an undisclosed location that apparently even Adam Schefter doesn't know. Wow. And that's why you haven't seen footage of Zeke walking in and out of a courtroom or anything. Right. Just pay attention to this. You'll never see it on TV. But, yeah, undisclosed location in New York. That's unreal. That's uh, the power of Jerry Jones in my mind. 
Well, it, it is all of it, and then I, and then again, I, they don't want any row. They're just trying to avoid the distraction, the the whole element of it. People. But why do they do of, this with Brady? I just I, thought it was right. really, really you're interesting. Right. It is interesting. Uh, 29s. Do you have any 29s? Oof. DeMarco Murray, Eric Dickerson, right yep. off the bat. Eric right off Dick- the bat. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of other 29s. Um, mm, the great punt returner, Al- was it Alvin or Gentry? Wasn't there a 29? Alan Rossum? Oh, maybe now that he wasn't 29, though. I don't have a Gentry. Go ahead, read him. All right, running backs right now. Your young man for the Chicago Bears, Tariq, oh, Tariq Cohen. Cohen. Yes, sir. Uh, Duke Johnson, yep. Bilal Powell, LeGarrette Blunt. you said DeMarco Murray, and John Kuhn. Kuhn. Is John Kuhn a white boy supreme? No. Well... Close, no, but not, not really. White Boy Supremes are slot receivers. But Kuhn is shifty. 29 now because he was always 30 in Green Bay. So that's right, now he's down 29. Defensive backs, a ton of them. Marlon Humphrey, Malik Hooker, Kavon Seymour, Bradley Roby, Andre Hal, Eric Berry, yeah. Nate Allen, Xavier Rhodes, Nat Berhe, David Amerson, Earl Thomas, and your main man, Jaquiski Tart. Yeah, Jaquiski. Looking like a baller. He is. He's going to be uh, San Francisco in general. They should be excited. They really should. Don't let like game preseason game number two where Hoyer made some st- yeah. you know, one dumb mistake and whiffed on the ball the one time even detract you from that. Uh, I do think they're going to surprise people. They were impressive. In and I'm going to get into some over unders for the season later when we're doing our predictions. Okay. And I just that's a team that I think has got a low level right now. All time defensive backs: Keon Carpenter, Don Griffin, Leon Hall were 29 for a long time. Ken Houston, Mark Murphy. Brian Williams, and my favorite, Sam Madison. Gosh, Sam. Love Sam Madison. What about, you said Xavier Rhodes before with the 29? Okay, good. Uh, Running backs, Joseph Adai, Michael Bush, the big-time baller, Chester Taylor, Leon Washington, and Eric Dickerson, who, man, I thought the Rams had moved on, but they hired him as their VP of Business Development. (laughs) Well, yeah, I, business development is like what I see with the Knicks doing with John Starks, where he just goes and sells advertising because when you sit in a meeting and then Eric Dickerson walks in, Kleenex might be willing to spend a little bit more money. Right. They're just taking a, p- a page from the book of the team that's in their town that's already done this and made LaDainian Tomlinson like yes. the face of their franchise off the field. That's oh, what and he it, is. It's, and Dan Marino to the to The, the Dolphins. Dolphins, exactly right. Was your dad ever that with the Giants? No, the Giants don't want that crap. They got the Maras. They just want to play football, win games. They're not worried about about like if they have an event and they they're going to call Big Phil they're going to go hey Big Phil we're having an event it's kind of important the Giants you come are by. bigger than that they are yes. but the Vikings might have like Fran Tarkenton rolling. yeah sir the Giants don't need that you know the Giants have been established they're here for a long long yeah. time they have a great tradition however fan base. if they started bringing Lawrence Taylor to meetings that, that would <laughs> should be amazing I uh, want to talk about really quick what's going on in Houston right now I'm sure like everybody else you see the images and it keeps it keeps you going what the hell are they going to do with all this water and it's really intense and it's really scary uh, but I want to give a shout out to all the people that I'm seeing in the NFL right now that are doing something Robert Kraft pledging a million dollars to the Red Claw Cross the Jets pledging a million, the Titans owner pledging donating a million. Des Bryant has donated 50k, and there's a lot of people, and I haven't gotten all of them. Emmanuel Sanders is from Houston, he donated 40k, and then he talked to a friend down there. He also donated 10,000 diapers because apparently that was an issue. Zeke donated 21,000, Leonard Fournette donated 50,000, and he said, Look, we went through Katrina and we know the feeling. All of the proceeds of the Texans Cowboys preseason game will be going to relief efforts. They're reducing all tickets to $25 to get as many people in as possible because preseason games don't sell out as much. It's a waste. Preseason game number four is a waste. But that's why they're doing $25. Get in there, take all that money, and now it's no longer a waste. Okay. Now it's going to a good it's cause. Still a, uh, that's, I'm not, I don't mean that. I'm just saying preseason game four. It's a scam. It's all a scam. But now it's, it's for a good cause. Now it's for a good cause. God damn it. Uh, and then the number one guy. J.J. Watt set up a fundraiser. This is the thing about J.J. Watt. He does things. He gets notoriety. Uh, fundraiser for Hurricane Harvey Relief. Donate. He, it was originally to raise $100,000. It is now over $6 million, and he's looking to go over ten. It, it might get there by the time this podcast comes out. Uh, it prompted a lot of people to tweet at us and go, you called him corny. This is what it is. And I said, look, he's an amazing person. Matt Miller said, and this was not a direct shot at us, I yes. don't think. Yeah. Everyone says, uh, like for all of you saying J.J. Watt is corny, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to say something. You can be corny 
and be a really amazing person. No In doubt. fact, I think the Venn diagram of corny people and great people, I think it's huge. Yeah. I think a lot of really right. corny people are great. We're just saying we don't want to hang out with them on a Friday night. Andrew Luck, super corny. Right. Great guy. Right. Russell Wilson, the corniest, <laughs> super nice guy. Right. Kirk Cousins, corny as hell, great guy. Look, a rapper, I don't know if you guys know who this is, Logic. He's this really popular rapper that's very corny, and he helps out people with depression. Right. Zuckerberg, super corny, dude, but he helps out people. Oprah is corny. Oh, I have books. You're corny. Yeah. Oprah's corny. But J.J. Watt, you can be corny but also be an amazing person. And that's what we've always said about J.J. is I would love him if my my daughter said, this is my my fiancé, his name's J.J. Watt. And I was like, wow, what a great guy. I know you're going to treat my, my daughter great. Yes. But I'm also going to be like, man, do you do anything else and talk about football and, and all that? That's what he is. He's all in. And, it, yeah, we're just saying that from a we're, – we're not saying he's a bad person or anything like that. He's obviously a great person. We're kind of assholes. Yeah, that's what we are. Well, we're just we're, – we're keeping it, like, guy real. I mean, it's just like, okay, is J.J. Watt a guy you really want to go out with? J.J. And- Watt would be the guy that if you were like, man, I'll tell you what, he's he's kind of a – he's kind of corny. And J.J. would be like, hey, man, that's our teammate. Don't talk like that. And it's like, <laughs> no. You want to know what one thing that's – jumped out to me yeah. about this you know me i always kind of look at the other or the weird That's what we do we do the opposite of everybody have you noticed though this is what it jumped out to me when i saw donations on tv yesterday from okay. nfl owners and other prominent people nfl there's no owner that's gone over like a million dollars no team it's a million a million houston astros 10 million houston rockets 5 million other NBA teams, more than a million. There's not an NFL team that's gone over a million yet. I think that, as with many things with NFL owners, Robert Kraft kind of sets the tone, and I think he came out with the million, and now everyone's kind of come around. I think the Titans may have come out before that. but Yeah, yeah she went She went right into the J.J. Watt she fund. She went right in there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, a million dollars. So you're saying that the NFL owners are a little cheaper than the other sports. Wow, we knew that. Come on. We did know that. Yeah, we did. But uh, I feel for you, Houston. Keep stay up because I really do. I got a lot of you know ex Longhorns and friends that are live there now, friends that are from there, and uh, it's unreal what you see on TV. It's unbelievable. We we did see this. It's kind of crazy to me that it's yet another American city that was told that they didn't have the infrastructure in case there was a rain. Yes. I also heard that Seattle, one of the rainiest places ever, uh, in their rain season, got less inches than Houston did in three days. Seattle. Wow. That was another tidbit from Doney. Again, follow Doney on Twitter. He's the man. Pat Doney. Search him up. What up, uh, Doney? Uh, unrelated, but another guy that did something that was charitable that I want to give respect to. Le'Veon Bell gave $750,000 for a new field at his high school. It is now Le'Veon Bell Field at Cruiser Stadium. This is a man that doesn't have a new contract, and he's still donating, and I really appreciate it. And since we are the Players Podcast, yeah. I wanted to give him some shine. Good job. And uh, I believe $750,000 is one one game check for him this year so that's really? perfect yep he's just gonna give he's playing one for free for the high school kids all right let's go through some super quick news it's been a very busy uh uh kind of week with a lot of trades i think part of it is because there is no cut to 75 this year it's right from 90 to 53 so, so can i just wax, wax poetically about that though you may. that's why i say the preseason game's number four. First of all all nfl teams there's a 53 man mo- roster they know 51 of the guys that are going to make the team. Already. If not 52, maybe even 53 in So some they're cases. deciding right now, do we keep that extra D lineman or that extra wide receiver? Right, and it's all going to be really – it's all going to be around special teams, really. That, those right. are the last few guys. Is our fifth receiver, can he play special teams? Is our sixth DB, can he play special teams? Do we teams? need an extra gunner or right. do we need an extra linebacker? Exactly okay. right. So they know what they, they've got already. I just I just feel bad from this standpoint. I mean, literally 37 guys are just getting used this weekend. They're just getting used. They're going out there as punching bags, none of the useful starters. What about the whole getting good tape? Well, it, it, you know, they certainly can put out some tape. Yeah. You're right about that. And maybe that's one area that I, I probably should have evaluated. because yeah, you need a few games of tape. You do. Um, but at the same time, there are still going to be a number of guys out there that they're going to beat to hell an NFL team this weekend and they know they're not going to make the team just to get maybe two or three guys some reps to help yeah. out the team for the regular season. And, of course, fourth preseason game, I don't think you need that many. Are you going to watch any? A little bit. Like, I, 
I will watch certainly. I'm gonna try. I want to watch like Trubisky start and Mahomes start and those kind of guys. Yeah. I just want to see what they look like just to continue my evaluations. Uh, first news thing that kind of shocked me was Broncos making calls about trading T.J. Ward. It yes. shocked the coach too, Vance Joseph. He's one of our better players, so I'd be surprised if he was on the trade block. I haven't heard that. Linebacker Brandon Marshall tweeted, "We better not trade the homie." What the fuck? One of the leaders of the team. I already know that. I mean, I know that. I mean, he is one of the leaders of the team, especially the defense. Yeah. He's very talented. I think the big thing we're missing with there, it's just John Elway. I think he's trying to stay ahead of the curve. And he's well, up for his contract is up after next I year. I think it's up after next year. And you got to remember, they have Justin Simmons, the kid they drafted in the yes. second or third round from you Boston College. He's a good player. And yeah, I, but I you think, don't trade TJ Ward. I don't think so. Not quite yet. I, no. I, I wouldn't do that. You've told it. He's the, he's a, he can actually cover Gronk. He's yeah, one he of the few guys. Exactly. But let's do one quick. Quick re- reaction to these because we have to get through them. Yeah, sorry. Packers sign Ahmad Brooks, one year, five great, million. Great signing. They needed somebody else on the edge. Uh, this I'm going to take this one. Eagles trade John Dorambos to the Saints for a seventh round pick. I get it. Yeah. You were going to cut him for a younger guy. You can pay the other guy less, and you believe that you can play this guy for the future. I'm just saying, for the last 17 years, yeah. the Eagles have had two long snappers, John Dorambos and then Mike Bartram. I've never seen Dorambos do a bad snap. I think he's a huge guy in the locker room to keep everybody loose. Right. Huge fan favorite with the magic tricks, but. Backup quarterbacks, snappers, and kickers, when they get to the max veteran minimum, right, yeah. where it's almost like a million dollars, and if it becomes close to a young guy who's doing the job they just good, always go. they're saving six or 700000 You're I'm out the door. Them. Right. Sucks. Uh, Bra- Browns trade Cam Irving to the Chiefs for a fifth rounder. This is an offensive lineman, former first-round pick. Yes, he's, he's struggled in Cleveland. Hasn't looked good at any stretch. You think Andy Reid can figure I it mean, out? I mean, Andy Reid, if there's one guy that can do it, and I think they're a, a team. Their line is so deep that he he would just be a fill in. That's what they're probably just. It's it's uh, an extra guy for the future. Browns cut Joe Hayden. Steelers are the favorite. Oof. Is there a more overrated player in NFL fans' mind than Joe Hayden because he was a first round pick and he was an all pro? And then he got a big deal. And he got a big deal. I mean, unless... we've been saying for years Thank he you. ran a 4 5 at the combine. He was slow as a rookie. Great I think he ran, cornerback. Did he run 4 5? I thought it was even 4 6. I thought Might it was have like been four, a 4 6. six one. All I know is great cornerback in terms of just like the, playing the position. Right. But he's only gotten slower in the NFL. But I think he might be the NFL player with the biggest disparity between what fans think he is and what he actually is. He's definitely in the discussion. You're right because, uh, I mean, think about the reaction we got. Remember two years ago when I, I put Joe Hayden like, respectfully at like ninth in the top ten corners in the People football? People freaked out. They freaked out. What do you mean Joe Hayden's not? He's one of the best corners in football. And it's all just on, like you said, first round draft pick and they gave him a new big deal so he's got to be really good. Um, no, his big issue is what you alluded to. He just can't turn and run with elite receivers, but he will help somebody secondary. Steelers, Chiefs, Saints. Yeah, all three could help use them. There's no doubt. Like the Saints I look at, you know I'm I'm really high on the Saints right now. They have a lot of talent in the secondary, but it's young, so they could use a veteran guy like that. Steelers, you get to play your team twice a year. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's the big thing. Shove it right in their face. And I think their scheme fits him the best. It's more of a zone scheme. Which he'd be great at. He's great at that. But if he wants to play man to man and go to Kansas so he, City, that's going to be a little So he's in the Arturon Werner part of his career where he's he needs to go to a zone team. Yeah, a zone team with a few splashes of man to man from time to time. All right. Uh, You brought up earlier that, like you said two years ago, Joe Hayden uh, was nine. Uh, We actually had someone on Twitter hit me up. Right. Baby underscore Jesus 14. Right. Which, come on, amazing. (laughs) He goes, he goes, hey. You know, you guys have an old take that was pretty accurate back in November of 2016. Thank you. And I went, you dug that up? Right. Take a listen. This is what you said in November of 2016. Um, what kind of contract has Kirk Cousins earned thus far? Because oh. he's playing very well. I mean, there, there's when you just said that, two people came to my mind. First of all, Alex Matthew Smith. Stafford. Cha-ching! Because Matthew Stafford's about to be the richest quarterback in football, Which I is, would bet. I don't think. <laughs> and then I went on to be like, I don't think he is. I don't think he's that great. And you were like, are you fucking kidding me, Lefko? And I was like, I'm only kidding. I was trying to argue with you, and I couldn't do it. I remember that. But that is the other big news. Matthew Stafford, five-year extension, $50 million. We're only going to give you the numbers that matter. Mm-hmm. $50 million signing bonus, $92 million guaranteed. Yep. Uh, one fun fact, Highland Park High School in Texas has now produced the highest paid player in the 
National Football League and Major League Highland Baseball. Highland Park, Stafford and Kershaw. Stafford, twenty-seven million a year. Kershaw, thirty-three million a year, and That's they were amazing. buddies. Yes, those guys playing baseball together as kids. I was explaining this to my little boy the other day because we were watching Clayton Kershaw, and I was like, "You know him?" And my bro- my little boy calls Matthew Stafford, Matthew Stamford, Matthew Stamford, <laughs> number seven. All right, Matthew Stamford. Yeah, your kid is going to be so ready <laughs> for all this. But stuff. I was like, they went to the. These are like two of the gifted throwers on the history of the planet. Mm. And they were at the same high school at the same time. That's insane. Insane. It really is. It's like Lawrence Taylor and Michael Jordan were walking around North Carolina at the same time, too. That's insane. I think it's interesting. As soon as this was announced, I knew there was going to be a debate about whether or not he deserved it. And I think there's one stat that means a lot to me. Since 2011, Stafford has accounted for 79% of the Lions' offense, the most by any player for any team. When I look at, at Stafford over the years, when he had Calvin Johnson, there was no really good number twos. He's had bad offensive line play for a long time. Yes. He hasn't really had a running back from all the Javid bests and all the attempts. They've never really gotten a power guy that could take anything away. The defense has been up and down for years. What You you right now are saying that Stafford is the third best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. When people come up to you and say, come on, he's overrated, he doesn't deserve this money. Beyond the whole, this is how the quarterback market works. Right. How do you tell people that Stafford does deserve this money? Okay, yeah, the, and, and um, it's easy. First of all, like I just said, this is one of the most physically gifted throwers we've ever seen. He is he is just a hair below an Aaron Rodgers. You've heard Drew Brees in the past wax poetically about Matthew Stafford when he sees him on film, and I wish I could do some of those things. He's never had a good offensive coordinator. In fact, really, the last two years, you just look at it and go, okay, he had Linehan at a time where Linehan was pretty good. Don't get me wrong. Linehan has had good spurts. Had good spurts, but I don't think anybody's going down there at Dallas right now and going, wow, he's reinventing the wheel. It's It's all about their own line. It's a good offense when executed well. Exactly. And then you go, okay, Jim Bob Cooter's probably been the best OC he's had to deal with in his career. Who did he have before Linehan? Oh, uh, before Linehan. Or was it him the whole time? No, it was Linehan to start, and then it went to Joe Lombardi, remember, the Saints guy? and they fired him to make Jim Bob Cooter the actual OC. Jim Bob Cooter has obviously got him on the right track because since Jim Bob Cooter's become the OC, he's definitely played better. He's been in more shape. We've seen him run around. Uh, And then I've seen him more of a – he's more of an asshole now than ever. So offensive coordinator is one thing. Offensive coordinator is one thing. Talented. Extremely talented. I don't like – we're extremely talented. We're talking like Aaron Rodgers, Dan Marino – that type of arm. That's what kind of arm he has, mm. okay? And then, yes, then you talk about talent around him. What? Who's there to talk about other than Calvin Johnson? Who? They've had a shit offensive line. They haven't had one freaking running back. They haven't had one good defensive unit. I know they had Ndama Kunsu, but yeah. he was like the only guy on defense forever. They're still not great on defense. So he's doing it. More of a, as much of a one man show as anybody we've seen in football, other than maybe Rodgers and Luck. You've always said that having Rodgers in his division makes it tough. It too. does. It makes it, it hurts what we value him as a physical entity because, yeah, we watch Rodgers and we go, wow, that's unreal. And Stafford does a few things every week that I go, wow, that's unreal. I, I just want you to know that I listen to a lot of other podcasts yeah. and a lot of them think that Stafford is wildly overrated it, and it, not a good all I All I ever hear is, oh, he never wins. He's never won a playoff game. But then I also hear people tell me that quarterback wins aren't a stat. Yeah, right. So wait, so he which, never wins. He's never won a playoff game. Okay, well, the two the two playoff games I can think of right away. I mean, Pack. Seattle this year, right? Seattle this year, they had chances. Can the receivers catch the fucking ball? Right? Think right. about it. Absolutely. Remember? Marvin Jones had the drop, and then I mean, Seattle had some of the greatest the receivers. Catches so we're going to blame that on Matt Stafford. Oh, now. I know that. I lost a few hundred Then in the that Cowboys game. game, the year of the Des Bryant drop up in Green Bay. The week before, they got screwed up. They were going to beat the Dallas Cowboys in they Dallas. Pass, uh, pass interference. Right. So there you have that. This is a team sport. I mean, if Matthew Stafford was on the New England Patriots, they'd be winning Super Bowls. Same way. I don't understand how anybody could judge it any other way. And then I hear – so this is where I also drives me crazy because, you know, okay, so here's a guy like Stafford, right, in the prime of his career, talented as anybody in the game. Years old. I mean, just in – Within an era where quarterbacks play to 40. And in, in an era where he's thrown for over 5,000 yards, he's been the only thing you can look at on their team – Last year, how many games did he win single-handedly late in the fourth he quarter? That, he had like four or five comebacks. If he doesn't year. hurt his f- finger, he's going to be in the MVP conversation. He's going to get a few votes. Okay, so now you have that. But then the other thing I hear just again is uh, it does come down to wins and losses. But, you know, 
he's been to the playoffs two of the last three years. When's the last time Drew Brees has been to the playoffs? Somebody tell me. But that doesn't go become a conversation. I don't there get you go. that. Shit on Drew Brees. Well, again. again, because it's just a guy. He's always the guy that gets the free pass. So that's I'm just what trying to say. happens when you win a Super Bowl. I know. So that's just so stupid. We're gonna we're gonna give him a free pass because he won a Super Bowl in '09, and Drew Brees hasn't been to the playoffs since 2011. Mm. But he's still the man, and he deserves Matt Stafford money at 39. Are you fucking kidding me? Matt Stafford's better than Drew Brees now. Twice on Sunday, five times on Wednesday. It's not even close right now. Everyone has to stop hating on these type of players and just saying it's, oh, it's it's about wins and losses. It's truly one of the things that we try and do here is give you the real information. You can go and hang out with your friends and have them tell you that Drew Brees is better than Matt Stafford, and you can look at them and go, whatever, man, like I get it, and they'll say Super Bowl. That's an uneducated conversation. We're trying to give you the good ones. But speaking about Breeze, yeah. so Breeze is 38. Yeah. In response to this, he texted his agent, Tom Condon, who's also Stafford's agent, and yeah. said, wow, Breeze is going to be a free agent after this year. Kirk Cousins is going to be a free agent after this year. Garoppolo is going to be a free agent after this year. You have Matt Ryan, Jameis. Who is the next quarterback to become the next highest paid guy? Because it's becoming a bubble. It's always yeah. been a bubble. It's not going to be Drew Brees. I can tell you that. Oh, yeah, we're going to give them $40 million a year at 40 yeah, That's what we're going to do. Good, good luck. Go sign them then because your team's going to suck. I can promise you that. That's been an issue for the Saints for the last five years right. is not the, being able to afford people. The Saints wanted to draft Johnny Menzel. The safe, Saints' number one player on their draft board was Patrick Mahomes this year. They were going to draft him. You know what them. the saving grace? Their owner, Tom Benson, yes. is cheap as hell, and they're not going to pay Breeze that I wouldn't think so unless they uh, find a better answer. Jameis and Mariota are reaching that re-up part. Who do you think becomes the next guy? Matt Ryan's coming up. Who Matt. do you think? So it's Drew, it's Cousins, Garoppolo, Ryan. Who do you think it'll be? I, I'm gonna Rogers go, still has three years on his deal. I'm going to go outside the box and still say it's Rodgers. Mm. I think it's going to be Rodgers because Rodgers, nobody deserves Rogers more did money come than out him. And say, I think we're a couple of years away. I don't want to think about it. I know I'm a part of the core players. He's saying all the right things. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked if like the season's over or late this year, they give him one more huge chunk of cash to end out his career. Speaking of Rodgers, I'd like to get a Sims raw reaction. Sims. What do you think of Rodgers' mustache? I saw that yesterday. Man, that is some ugly shit. I'll tell Check you. Check out Google Aaron Rodgers' mustache. What He looks like the dude from the Big Lebowski. More, what I was more impressed with, if oh, you can't make the picture bigger? I could do it. Yeah, well, no, I wanted to show. There's a picture that actually shows the rest of his arm. I mean, to show you, I want to see the rest. Yeah, it's not there. There's a if there's another picture. His saw, arms look bigger. He's got some muscle on him. The guy is a, he's a freak of nature in a lot of ways. He looks like Wyatt Earp. That's what I thought he looked like. I thought he was about to pull out his six shooter and be like, you're breaking the law. I was going to say one thing that Stafford doesn't ever get credit for. He's a good leader of that team. Yeah. Uh, back from his rookie season where he separated his shoulder and dove in for that late touchdown. Right, right. To anytime you see a mic'd up segment, he is leading that team. No doubt. Aaron Rodgers is, an op is a different type of leader, but I love him equally for this, which is he is so good at how many times have we heard him say relax? Yeah. How many times have we, he gone in there and calmed the team down? He is the cool under pressure leader. Right. He is the Joe Montana leader where I feel like Stafford is much more of the like Elway type of like let's go out there and kick some ass leader. Yes. And there are different types of leaders. There is. You don't, you don't have to be the same way to make it all work. Uh, the other thing that I found in that clip where you're talking about Stafford is an undercover Lefko bomb. We were talking about, if you remember, the out-of-bounds Denver. Broncos when he blocked the field goal on the Saints right. and he ran and we thought he stepped out of bounds right. and my idea then was they should put a thin red line on the out out of bounds line right. so that if someone steps out of bounds it's clear and if someone's wearing white, white cleats, cleats yes. it would be the difference right. and that is a segment that we're trying to figure out right now I asked the fans when I have a really good thought what should we call it we got some suggestions okay. R Walker 86 call it left coast corner and I can start it off today in Lefko's Corner. Uh, Garbellion said, call it the thick tank, because apparently I'm thick. You are a little thick. I am thick. thick. Uh, Matthew Bremner said, thoughts from Lefk Field. 
which is pretty good. Right. Um, but again, I started a website back in the day. It was a Tumblr called Out of Lefko Field. My dad thought it was going to be a really big hat. He even made a hat that said Out of Lefko Field on it. <laughs> I should just start wearing that. Uh, and then Spitman 209, uh, Whoa, Big Thoughts. Whoa, big offseason. Whoa, big thoughts. Should we do whoa, big thoughts? Whoa, big left co or out of left co field? Out of left co. I'm going to let you pick. Out of left co field or whoa, big thoughts? I think out of left co field. I will bring in the hat and I will wear it from now on. (laughs) Out of left co field. That is where we are going. That's smart. It's good branding. Good branding. Good marketing. Bam, yeah. Uh, And I have a few for us this week. Okay. Number one, don't know if you saw this, uh, a few weeks ago, Bucks Jaguars was the NFL's lowest rated ESPN game since 2005 mm. with a 1.6. Well, guess what? On Saturday, the Chargers-Rams was the lowest NFL preseason game on national TV other than the NFL Network since 2004 with a 1.4. Wow. Out of Lefko Field, uh-oh. What the fuck is going on right now with NFL ratings? Granted, Saturday's game was also Saturday night. Mayweather McGregor could have happened. Just keep your eye on it. What is up with the NFL ratings right now? Because preseason or not, they're the lowest they've ever had. Political oversaturation. You got NFL Game Pass or any of those kind of things. I can watch it later. That's the problem right now is there's a million reasons as to why the ratings could be down. I'm just saying, keep an eye on it. Let's see if it goes into the regular season as well. Next up. Uh, I everyone is really upset right now, Sims. Game of Thrones just ended. Oh, and the reason it's going by the way, uh it ended with incest. Did one oh John Shocker. Snow, John Snow slept with his aunt. What? <laughs> Holy crap, Ola. Uh but everyone's upset because it's not coming back until March 2019, because they still have to shoot the last season. This is the last season. Okay. L- is at a Lefko Field. Yeah. They should bring back Game of Thrones a year after that, September of 2020. Why? Because that's when the NFL is going to be striking, and I'd like something to look forward to every Sunday. (laughs) That's a good thought. That is when the NFL is going to go on strike, bring back Game of Thrones, September 2020. Then it's going to become the new NFL, where everyone's going to go, oh, man, all summer they're going to strike. Just, just, like, watch all of the Game of Thrones. HBO numbers go through the roof. Bang. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. That was out of left go field, field, but I like it. Last one. We previewed this on Tuesday. The Atlanta Falcons are going to hurt their own team. I'm reading this article about this brand new $1.5 billion Atlanta Falcon stadium. And they said they have this incredible new field surface, and it's really soft. So soft that Alex Mack, their center, said it was soft. The softer, the better. Slows down the defensive linemen who get faster every year. And it was one of those like, oh, yeah, this is great for the offensive line. Except the Atlanta Falcons, more than any other team, are built on speed. Yes, they Their are. Their offense is speed. Their defense. Yeah, let's slow down Vic Beasley and your linebackers and Keanu Neal. I, uh, you're right. you got to play to your surface. So. I think that, just pay attention this yeah. year, let's see if the Falcons' offense isn't that great at home. Yeah. Let's see if the over-under hits the under a little bit more times at home. Right. We talk about the Patriots being so smart. They know... It, Belichick pays attention to each playing surface and what cleats they're going to wear. They go a little bit bigger because they have grass at home. They don't. And That's their. He's, from what I know, he doesn't like that because the MLS thing has ruined that. What right? do you mean? The, they have field oh, turf. Gillette. Yes, at Gillette, but they have the MLS team that plays there during the football season, so they've had to get away from grass, which but I know he was. Did you tell me that he used to grow out the grass in the playoffs well, when they were playing teams to slow them down? No, not necessarily. The field was slow in general because it was just beat up through the year. They yeah. had a le- legit winter in New England, yeah. and his team was built on size. So, yeah, teams were going to go in there and be slow. New England, the Super Bowl is the perfect example. This is why teams go with size. The Super Bowl against the Falcons. You know what happened as that game went on? The fast guys got slower. The big guys stayed big and kept pushing them around. So they didn't wear out, but mm-hmm. one team did. So that's why he's built it on on size. But I know he's not. I know he wasn't thrilled with the fact that that changed. Yes, uh, but, but he does pay attention to that. Definitely, as everybody should. No doubt. Think about it. If you've played football with your friends in the backyard, yeah. and you play on a turf, you guys are flying. Yeah. When you're on grass, if it's snow. The big dudes are kicking your ass. It's just how it is. It is. But I I just think the Falcons are in for a rude surprise. And when I read that, I went, 
at a left cove field. This could be an issue. So my brother sent me a video of the locker room. Really inc- cool. Oh, that's, that's right. Amazing. Your brother's in the f- – I keep forgetting. So, and then my mom was at the game this weekend, so she went to the stadium. How awesome And is I that? asked her. She goes, oh, it's a really pretty stadium. I was like, well, where does it rank? She goes, well <laughs> – it's not the Cowboy Stadium. That's special. Really? Yes. She's still amazed. This is your mom? She is amazed by the Your Dallas. mom traveled to go watch your brother? She did. She was a That's, nice mom. How did your brother play? He played pretty good. He did. What is your prediction on him? Is he going to play like all of the fourth game? He's going to play all. He's one of the 37 that they're going to get. let him beat his head in the ground so Time he cannot out. be you, on a team. You don't think he's going to make the no, team? No, I don't think my brother's going to make the team. No, I don't. It's going to be Schaub? No, yeah. Let's, yeah. Do you yeah. think he gets picked up? Hey, I mean, uh, you know. I know he's getting calls. He, yeah, but we'll we'll see. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be out there. You know, this is going to be a year Fucking where I think a. you're going to see a Hashtag lot of good. Matt Sims for a roster. We're going to see a lot of good backups. You know, you, you got to think of the Sanchez, the Kellen Clemens of the world. There are going to be a lot of guys out there in the market. So, yeah, my brother, the, he might get screwed over. Is he over. hearing things he's going to get? Well, I mean, I just think they have Matt Ryan and they have Matt Schaub. And mm. if you know coaches, it's like, oh, Matt Schaub threw touchdowns in 2010 so we can <laughs> trust him, even though he went you know, to Oakland and didn't play very good. I will good. say and, this. But... I, I watched a clip from Derek Carr where he talked about how Matt Schaub was a really good influence for him. Oh, his Schaub's year. a great dude. And that's the thing is – is Matt Schaub kind of has that old dude. There's a reason Ryan Fitzpatrick is chilling behind Jameis Winston. No doubt. I'm not going to lie. I'm hoping Matt Schaub gets like a real bad at high ankle sprain, okay? You're and, so and I'm up. just saying it. Matt, I, I, you, Matt Schaub, I like you a lot. It's not about that. I just know you've made a ton of money, Matt Schaub, a ton, and you had a good career, and Matt Sims just wants a little nibble. Yes. So. That's why we keep it real. We're right. just going to be honest. Right. Uh, quick, Two quick broadcasting things. Mike Vick joining Fox Sports. He's going to be on the Fox NFL kickoff, which is the show before the pregame show. Yep. And he's also going to appear at times on Fox Sports 1 studio shows. You think he's going to be good at this career? You know, I do think Mike will be pretty good at this. I uh, don't. You don't? I just think he's going to be really nice to everybody. Well, he is. Well, he's a great dude. I I'd do rather think... see Mike Vick highlights than Mike Vick talking. I know. Well, okay. I get what you mean. But uh, he's a friend of the podcast and I love him. Well, I hope as long as he is, he's still invested in kind of paying attention to the NFL, he's got a great feel for players and talent. Like, I mean, I hung out with Mike on a, at the Super Bowl this year on a Friday night before the Super Bowl. We were together the whole night. And really? Yeah, because he came to my agent's party and we hung out Damn, by the I bar. Wanna, that sounds fun. Yeah, so we chilled. And well, my, he's Allen Iverson for the NFL, so everybody wants to talk to him. So maybe he can get a lot of – if he gets a lot of cool sit-downs, yes. like him talking to some really cool NFL players, they will open up to him. He's an urban legend, like yes. we talked about. He, you he know, is. He, he, can de- he debunked the system. You know what? I'm so fucking good, there's nothing you can do about it. That's nothing. what he was. That was like nothing. Randy Moss and Allen Iverson. The Another one caught my attention. Uh, Romo uh, is missing the preseason broadcast, or he missed because of the birth of his child, the third preseason game. Um, This first game is going to be the regular season Raiders-Titans. My first thing was he's going to be taking over a job where he's going to be on the road for like the entire season because he's got to do two games a week with a newborn child. Well, he's got three kids already. And then he's got a newborn? I guess. And he missed the preseason okay, game? Okay, he's got $100 million. He's got a babysitter at home. I'm just saying. I know. I think I have been telling a lot of people that I think people are going to be very disappointed in Romo early in the season. I think it's going to be tough. I joked on the last podcast you can't talk about it because it was your dad's job. Yeah. But I'm curious what you think about Romo in the booth. I, 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 I um. Because has anyone heard him yet? Nobody has heard of him. Well, listen, when I first heard this, to be totally honest with you, I thought it was fishy, too. I was like, what? That doesn't even seem right. The baby was born three days before the game. So, um, and it's the third kid. I, I don't know. It's just not as prestigious as the first one. And, uh, and, 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 and I think the other thing I just went, I, I really thought, I just thought, and I don't know this. I have no inside information. Okay. And Tony Rome was a great dude. And I, asked, I wasn't sure he had the personality to Romo have this too. job. I have a Romo body. Right. Not anymore. But. but I was, the first thing I thought was, oh, he just, they don't want to put him out there yet. He's not ready. And they don't want anybody to hear it. And they don't want to start the Twitter verse and everybody going, yeah. oh, you suck, Tony Romo. So they probably wanted to get him a few more weeks of practice before they threw him out there live. That was just my thought. Man, it's interesting. I mean. You don't see – I've never seen a broadcaster this pampered this much. 
sending him to games and doing fake broadcasts. Well, they realized they made a big decision. They got rid of a guy and my dad that's been doing it for a while. And you, whether you like my dad or think he's yeah. a blowhard, they, you, he came prepared and was ready to go. So they've made this huge change. It got a lot of publicity. Super hard for Romo. For a guy that's very polar polarizing with fans. Yes, I think they're they realize that oh, he needs to come out strong and, and look good. I am going to make sure that cuz yeah, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to over we're going to have to talk about Romo. I am not going to be we are not going to be overly critical because of how close it was to you. I'm going to listen to him and I'm going to put him up when we're watching the six or seven games yep. and I'm going to listen. Yeah, and sure. I will give him a fair shake. I think Romo is an amazing person. He was super nice to us yeah. when we went to Dallas training camp, Good trotted out in his work out clothes and right. said whatever you guys need yep. I love Romo right. I just think CBS messed up and how they did the transition when NBC showed the perfect way of with Tariko and all that stuff and I just think they handled it poorly right. and unfortunately like all on air talent yep. whatever happens behind the scenes you need to answer for it when you're on air Yes. so it's going to happen Yeah, you're right. Uh, you mentioned when we were talking about Russell Wilson that he's got a really cool helmet Yeah. well I looked into this helmet right and it's an interesting, this is kind of an out of left go field thing. So a lot of the Seahawks, there's about six of them, are wearing this new V-I-C-I-S helmet. Visus or Visus. Sam I don't know what Bradford it is. and the Vikings is wearing it too. Okay. Well, a few other guys are too. Yeah. It's the Zero One helmet. It costs $1,500. Wow. Um, is that a big deal? I mean, that seemed a lot. Do the players don't pay for their own helmet? No, no. It's all the, the NFL, yes. And you get the helmet, and then you at the end of the year, you either get to take it or it gets sent back to get refurbished or whatever. So Usually here's the like deal. Take it. The NFL had a helmet laboratory uh, testing performance out of 33 helmets. Were you trying to say li- laboratory? Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Okay. Laboratory. <laughs> laboratory. The old laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> Laboratory, <laughs> shit. It's when you're reading and you want to sound intelligent. They tested 33 helmets. This one finished first, okay? Okay. Uh, it has an outer shell that is deformable and yields much like a car bumper. There is also a layer of flexible columns that absorbs impact. Now, in terms of what the players think, Averill said it's not as hard as the other helmet. It's a little bit health heavier, but I like it. You don't feel the hu- the thuds as hard as they normally do. Um, and also Mitch Morse, who is an offensive lineman yeah. for the Chiefs, yes. said... Your old helmet would make a big clack. Right. This one boings. It's like boing, boing, boing. Huh. And it seemed to Im- uh, absorb the impact. Now, Alex Smith wears it, and he's actually an investor in the company. Oh. Alex Smith, Doug Baldwin, and Richard Sh- Sherman actually sit on the advisory board. It was started by a startup in Seattle. There are guys wearing it across the NFL. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. If it finished number one, out of the thirty-three, out of the thirty-three tests, first thing and I it's thought supposed to help you with concussions. Why is every player in the NFL not wearing this? Because there's contracts with who makes this one? What's the name it's of the a company? Startup in Seattle right. by Visus. Because there's con- con- uh, companies like Rydell. And I can't remember the other helmet company, Shutt, S-H-U-T-T. Now, they did say that some players, it's a little bit of an adjustment. Yep. And that some players, as we've heard many times, they don't want to change anything. Oh, it's impossible. You tricked get me to change a helmet. I was like, are you effing kidding but me? But you saw it was wider. Yep. It was more of a field of vision. It didn't have poles right in front. Right. You thought it looked cool. It does look I, cool. But why is every player not wearing this? If it's going to really help this. you, right. if these players say, I can feel it, like it doesn't hurt as much. Yeah. What the fuck? I, I mean, it is the stubbornness of the NFL player. It's the stubbornness of just like, I've played in this since high school right here. This I like this Rydell, the diaper inside. I want to wear that. That's like, the what? Yeah, because there's different. There's like air helmets, right? And then there's ones that have just like squishy pads. It's oh, almost yeah. like a diaper. Like it'd be like a, that, that. That was the kind of helmet I like. But I yeah, got it's you. Hard so if I'm protecting my head, I don't want to rely on a diaper. I'd like to rely on the one with shock with columns. Technology. That's mod- yes. <laughs> yeah. But if you were playing now and this came out with all these stories, oh, I would, I would definitely be wearing that helmet you're wearing. He's wearing right there, the just for fa- the looks alone. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. I'm wearing that. Just yeah. So when you watch Seahawks games, take a look at Baldwin, Sherman. These are the smarter players on the team. Russell Wilson. <laughs> I just think to me, it's crazy that we can name on one hand and look at this mandatory. The, you're making mandatory. That's that. Mandatory. Yeah. The Bleacher Report app, Bam. baby. It is always great. Steelers expected to sign. Joe Hayden to three-year, $27 million deal. Wow. 
Nine million a year. Oh, I'm fucking pissed off if I'm Levy on Bell. You gave him nine Ooh. million a year. What the fuck? I want money. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, there's... Well, they can't. I know. They can't now. That's so a thing. That is Aaron Donald is. can get more money. Odell can get more money. Le'Veon cannot. It's a good signing by them, though. It really is. They're, so now they, now they have guy. your guy, uh, uh, Artie Burns. Artie Burns, right. who's been working with Le- with uh, Antonio Brown getting better. Right. They have Artie Burns. Ro- uh, Ross, Ross Cockrell. Cockrell. Do you like him? I do like him. He's not a superstar, but he's a good player. And Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden's pretty good. And you good. know what's big? And Joe Hayden has always covered A.J. Green re- for some reason. He has. You're right. And that's in the division. Yeah. And now the Steelers, who I think were a top five team, mm-hmm. got a really good player that he'll do well against the Patriots. The Patriots will mess with him on a few plays and no. take him deep. But that's the but kind that's of guy he sign. can be. He's actually, he, since he's more quick than fast, he can handle those guys over the middle running those option routes. Wow. And it's the perfect defense yeah. with the zone. No doubt. That is really, really big. All right. One other story. Because, oh, what's up? I wanted to say. I know we're supposed to like we're going to pick our teams and our divisions and all that. Do we want Coming to do up that? In five minutes. Do we were definitely doing that today? Yes. Okay. Fine. I want to do it now because next week I want to preview the game ones. Okay. Why? Well, I just Did figured that change we have, your mind. Well, we have three. Di- if we're going to do three shows next week, what? Do we, I, I, there's not going to be a lot to talk about preseason game number four. I'm saying we should like make the Monday or Wednesday show that kind of thing, and then we're going to preview I, the game I, on I, Thursday. I'm prepared for. All right, but there's other shit we can talk about. I mean, we're not that, like, void of we're content. We're special guest. All right, fine. All right, we're going to do it this week, but if it changes, we'll cover that Monday. Okay, Wednesday. all right. There's going to be so many things that happen. This has been one of the craziest times I've seen in preseason in terms of news constantly happening. Yes. This is the prediction episode. One other thing I wanted to say between – since we were just talking about Kansas City and Seattle with uh, those two teams with the helmets – I found a story about your main man, Ron Parker, huh. who is one of the original man crushes that you've had. Yes. Um, so what's so crazy is an article by B.J. Kissel out there in Kansas City. Um, do you realize that Ron Parker was cut eight times by three different teams? I do. Okay, yes. so his story, we love Ron Parker. He's on Kansas City. He doesn't get enough credit. Uh, last year, he led all safeties and passes defended, and he's number one in Kansas City history in sacks for a defensive back. Mm. Um, but I forgot he started off with the Seahawks. Yeah. And just to show you how cool the NFL is, Earl Thomas uh, had been drafted like a year before, and Ron Parker's trying to make the team. And Earl Thomas says, man, you're really quiet. I think you have talent. Come to my house. Hang out. Let's get dinner. Right. Ends up, he starts staying with Earl Thomas while he's on the practice squad. You're not making a ton of money. Like, all, like, you, like you can't buy a house because at any moment you can get cut or whatever. Uh, he lived, he took up the entire downstairs of Earl Thomas's apartment, and they became good friends. Right. He taught him a lot, how to be a professional, how to play, how to do all this stuff. Ended up being a groomsman in Earl Thomas's wedding, which I thought was great. Really cool. Uh, Ron Parker ends up be, like getting on the Chiefs, having a lot of success. They draft Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters stays at Ron Parker's house and kind of passes it along. Right. Is this something you've seen with players, like the whole staying over the house? Like, I know Justin Pugh. Mm-hmm. He had a practice squad offensive lineman staying at his apartment for a long time. Is this a thing that happens? Very common. Really common. I mean, it's uh, if there's any, like, back history between a player, right? Like, you know, one guy was a senior in college while the other guy was a, fr- a freshman, and now they're on the same NFL team. Oh hey, dude! Yeah, you could stay here at my place until you get a get an apartment, get a place for your own, or you know you're not sure you're gonna make the team. You can stay here in my house until you actually make the team, or you get cut and you got to go somewhere else. Happens all the time. Uh, it's part of the camaraderie of the NFL. It's really cool to see that. It's cool to hear about Earl. Earl's such a good guy. Um, and Ron Parker, I'm he's one of the things I'm most proud about in our our start of our BR career because yeah. we got on him early. He was a phenomenal player that got no notoriety, and then he got a pretty big contract, and you know, a year or two into his Kansas City stay, he's a phenomenal football player. Like, I'm not surprised to hear those stats. Did you have any players that you saw staying with each other back in the day? Oh gosh, let me think about that real quick. Um, hmm. There was always there was always guys. I just can't know if I can throw them out there on a on a in a pin and pinpoint it right here off the top of you my head. You didn't anyone stay with you, did you? No, I never did. No. Good for you. <laughs> I was always my house was always the house to come hang. Like, let's go to Chris's house because his wife will get on the grill and make us some burgers yeah. and do that kind of thing. And, you know, we'd, we'd watch whatever the games, whatever sporting event. But that was that was the extent of it. And now 
I'd like to welcome in a special guest, Steinmetz. Cue the music. Hey, baby! Come on in, my friend. What? Yes. What is going on? Oh, uh, we're bringing been a... in the old Nelsie Boo. And here he is, the smoothest man in show business. <laughs> we gave you no seed and no mic, but come on in. No, I just want him to walk around. <laughs> yes, fans, you've been asking for it, and it's time. Hey, give, him the, give him those pipes. Uh, how are you? The music's playing, by the way. Ooh, it is. <laughs> Steven Nelson, everybody. You remember him if you've been a longtime mm. listener to the podcast yeah. on the down low. We're doing season predictions, and I needed his sultry tones. <sighs> Keep in mind, fellas, my name is no longer Steven. It's Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> I went to that Stefan or Kel machine, and I came out ready to go down low. You coming with me, Simsy? You know it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start in the NFC and the home of Papa Phil, oh. Big Phil Sims, the yeah. NFC East, fellas. Mm. Who's winning that division All in right. 2017? All right, turn off this reverb. It's yeah, I don't. <laughs> I can't hear myself, so it's not great. Um, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna predict every division first. Right. I'm yeah. gonna go first so that I don't steal your. Why tip. are we echoey right now? You hear the echoey? Yeah, Steinmetz is doing the reverb. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I'm gonna come over here. All right, so yeah. NFC East. So you guys can have that. Okay. I am picking the Giants. To win the NFC East, I'm the I'm the I'm right there with you. The NFC East, I'll say this: this is why I, w I wanted to do this later next week. I really did because I did not come fully prepared with all my points here. <laughs> I literally texted him yesterday and said, "Here is exactly what it we're is going like to old do." Times. I'm a jerk, I, I, <laughs> but I'm picking the Giants as well to win the NFC East. I think the Giants. My biggest concern with the Giants, real quick, is just Eli Manning and a little bit of the offensive line. Definitely that offensive per line. Period. That's all there is to it. The defense certainly is one of the best units. Is this in football. a tough division for you to pick? It is a tough. It's a tough division. No, it was not a tough this division. Is the, uh, this is one that I wrote down and I didn't even look at. Yeah, it. right. It was Giants Cowboys. The one thing you say about the, this division though is their schedule is for real this year. Oh, they're playing the AFC West and the NFC. The NFC South. South. You're exactly so they're playing right. Playing four good quarterbacks and then four good defenses. Yes. No, they're playing the NFC West and the AFC West. Excuse me. Right. So it's Seattle, Arizona. All yeah. Those teams. So that's gonna be legit. All right. Next. Those picks went down smooth, oh. sort of like this <laughs> strawberry banana smoothie <laughs> I have here. We're going to the north. Oh, man. We are following the king of the north, Sims. I've realized now that you don't understand what I'm talking about. Well, the king of the north, isn't that something that Game of Thrones? Yeah, I yes. forgot. That Did one one stay alive? Is he still alive? He is, but he's a, he's a white walker. Oh, okay, he's still there, though. It's just like my dad. He's really white. He's walking around. <laughs> <laughs> and you. My question is. Who wins the NFC North? <sighs> this is close to, to Nelson's heart yes, this is. as a Bears fan. Yes. By the way, Sims is really high on your Bears. I, I keep telling people I think they're going to be better than everybody seems to. They were the most hurt out. team in the NFL a year ago. When do you right. want Trubisky to start? Um, when Glennon sucks in a regular season. So not right away. Not right away. <laughs> I am no. going. This is, the, this is one of the toughest divisions to pick, I, I thought. I agree. Yeah. I am going with the Vikings. I'm going to stay with it. Yeah. I am too. Damn ah. it! I wasn't sure. I wanted to dump back. You know, I made that bold prediction Lions. that the, the Packers wouldn't make the playoffs, and I, I mean, I found myself going like, as I was doing this, going, "Damn, oh, am I really going to do this? Am I really not going to put Aaron Rodgers but in the playoffs?" But Simsy, one one plus one equals twelve. twelve. <laughs> what does. about the Packers? The Packers are. I think going to be in the playoffs, maybe. I'm really well, on the fence with them. But I'm picking the Minnesota okay. Vikings to win wow. the division, even though it has not looked that – I haven't been encouraged with the way their defense has looked the last two weeks. But I do think the offense is going to be better, and I'm just going to put my trust in Zimmer and the talent they have on that defense that it does get it turned around here. But too many big plays against the 49ers and the week before that, who was at the Seattle Seahawks. That, that yeah. is a little concerning. Okay. <laughs> When Adam Lovko says go south, I go south. Wait, again. so what, your your girl okay down in Texas right now? She is. She's good. I'm gonna break character. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, yeah. For context, she works in Austin, Texas, and because you like to go south, to go down <laughs> south, we know. There it is. It Cindy. gets on a plane to uh, go down south. She is. She is okay. Yes. Thank you for asking. I'm going with the team. I told you this messed me up. Yeah. You're so high on the Saints, and then when I looked at the rosters, I went. I kind of like the Saints, but 
I went Buccaneers to oh, win the South. Oh, baby. I am. Okay. Okay. I, don't I, don't think it, I don't think they're actually going to win it, but I'm thinking the Bucks. The <laughs> South is a crapshoot every year. A lot There's, of hard knocks. Yeah, and that sucks. I hate that I'm a sucker. I just think the offense is going to be great. Yeah. And I like Gerald McCoy. I like their linebackers. Mm-hmm. And, but I don't know. I'm going with the Bucks. I worry about. I worry about the enough. Qu- well, I the secondary a little bit. I don't worry about Vernon Hargraves, the whole secondary. But then I do worry about that. You know, who is going to be that other stand standout D lineman? It's only Gerald McCoy. Yes. Other guys have looked good. It's not Chris. And Baker. then the offensive line is not perfect yet either. Yeah. They are certainly a team to watch out for. I'm I'm going with the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints to me are have looked phenomenal. I think they were better than people realized last year, and I think they've got a lot of their issues fixed on defense. They look like a different team to me, so I I, I like I like their look for sure. The best coast and not the best division in the NFC, the NFC West. The Niners Sims have your boy at the helm. Yeah. Can the Niners pull it off? You'll tell us in a second because left goal goes first. Uh, this was just like the Giants. I wrote this down really quickly. Seahawks, NFC West. Yeah, Seahawks are going to win the NFC West. There's no denying that, too, either. Th- this is the first year, though, I feel like with the Seattle Seahawks. I want to say this. Arizona, I, I still think Arizona is going to be good. Um, the Rams and Niners will be better. The Seahawks, I'm going to say this just as like my little bold statement for them. I think this is the year their defense falls off just a hair. They're not going to be like top five defense. They'll be top ten. They've been like number one scoring defense right. for like four years. So in the, row. I think this is the year the offense really pulls its so share. So they're going to pull a Bizarro Falcons. You think the Falcons defense will carry them? Wow. You think the Falcons defense will carry them, and you think the Seahawks offense will carry them? I do. I that's think, wild. I think they're going to be the unit that's going to scare people the most this year. I still think the Seahawks defense is going to be really good, but I just again here we are. Okay, like. It's Earl Thomas is getting up there in age. Michael Bennett is getting up there in age. Richard Sherman's getting up there in age. This is not the same team from 2013 that beat Peyton Manning and the Broncos in the Super Bowl. They're all now five years older. It's addition. Let's get wild, boys. <laughs> the wild card picks in the NFC. Damn. You want to go first? Sexy. By the way, <laughs> the guy, the, that's the opposite of sexy. The, 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 report, the reporter that I was saying, Donny, show yeah. him again. He goes, I, I've said your name. Mm-hmm. And he goes, uh, he goes, man, that guy's voice is so deep. <laughs> and I go, that's the one comment you're going to make? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give both of my wild cards in the NFC. I had the Eagles written down for a long time, and I said, I'm just being a homer. I can't do that. Packers, Cardinals are my two NFC wild cards. So I'm going Giants, Vikings, Bucks, Seahawks. Packers, Cardinals. No, so cow- no, no Cowboys, Cowboys, no Washington, no Eagles, yep. um, no Lions, which I really liked. I don't have the Saints in there, and I I don't have the Panthers in there. So I'm going Packers and Cardinals. Okay. All right. I'm going to stay true to what I wrote down on paper. It, that's the three teams it's down to in my eyes. It's the Packers, the Cowboys, and the Arizona Cardinals. Wow. Okay. okay that's where I really look at it. That, at least... I looked at the Cardinals roster, and I was like, their offensive line is good. I think their offense is going to bounce back. I think and so, I, too. I just think they were like the opposite of the – I just think they had a lot of bad bounces last year. Yeah, they did. And, and yeah, they, they blew some games like the tie game against the Seahawks where they could have put the game away 25 different times. My wild card teams will be – the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go with it, okay? And okay. I'm going with the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to hold true to my bold You're prediction. You're the Packers don't make I'm it. I'm going to hold true to my bold prediction that do I said three weeks. Do you feel confident? No, I do not feel confident at all. I don't. You're in betting fact, against the greatest quarterback of all time. I know. It's it's really crazy. I do think their division's gotten better. I don't know if the Packers got better. I would say at the very least they've stayed the same. I like that they signed Ahmad Brooks today. That was a good signing. But I think... Uh, yeah, I think this is the year the magic runs out and they just miss out. Wow. Yeah, I know. Right, I'm, gonna... I'm with you. I think Arizona's got their offensive line issues fixed. I think there's a l- underrated talent on the defense. Yeah. And um, I put a lot of trust into that head coach. I like Bruce Arians. The Cowboys do concern me. To me, it actually became the Cowboys or Green Bay. That was my final decision. So you're that confident in Arizona? I do. I feel pretty good about Arizona. I think they've turned the corner and are in a good spot. All right, so our only difference is you have the Saints winning the South, I have the Bucks, and then you have the Cowboys in the playoffs, and I have the Packers. Yep. Okay. All right, uh, here there's another conference. <laughs> so rude. Should we just skip the foreplay of the AFC East? Just... 
Patriots. Patriots. I mean, yeah, Patriots, Patriots. 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 Okay, let's get that out of the way. And then head north to the AFC North, where there was a transaction today, as noted on the Bleach Report app. Yes. Download now in the App Store for free. <laughs> Joe Hayden going to the Steelers. Did this that? one, you know what? I actually looked at for a long time. The Ravens roster is really deep. The Bengals are so overlooked. It's unbelievable. They are, yes. But I'm going with the Steelers. Going with the Steelers? Yeah. This is, this is, I bet you Sims picks the Ravens. This is a tough one. I am picking the Ravens. Wow. Really? I, am. I am not betting on Joe yeah. Flacco and how much time he – like. Apparently he's throwing now, yeah. but you're going with the Ravens. I am. On the day the Steelers get Joe Hayden. I am. It's not going to change it for you're me. You're a sicko. Um, I'm just – listen, the Pittsburgh one, of course, the Le'Veon Bell issue does bother me. They don't have a legit running back there right now. I don't care what they say. How much they want to mm. make the the kid Connor from uh, Pitt their their James new fan Connor. favorite, right? He's not Le'Veon Bell. Um, Baltimore to me has been one of the most impressive teams in the preseason, other than at the quarterback position. And I'm going to put in my faith in Joe Flacco that he's just going to be good enough to win some football games to start the year. Yes, I, I, that's where I'm going with it. That's it's risky. Bold. It's a bold one. It is. I know. You got AFC. anything else you want to say? I just want to know who you're going to pick for the AFC South. Oh, wow. Mm. Let's make this one quick. I'm going Titans. I'm going Titans as well. I okay. can't put in my faith in anybody else. I'm not picking the Colts. I mean, the, to me right now, they look like the worst team in football. Okay, I'm not picking Jacksonville. They look like the second worst team in football. Yes. And then Houston's got Harvey and a whole bunch of other shit that's bothering them. Okay? Harvey. Hurricane. Harvey. Oh, Heard yeah. Of them? yeah I was going to say, too, the thing that scares me about the Texans because I really uh, – is the fact that Newton and their other offensive, uh, Dwayne Brown. Yeah, Dwayne Brown are not are, there. Both tackles aren't there. I know. I know. So that's going to be a big issue for them. Last but not least in the AFC, fellas, the AFC West. There's Ooh. not much more to say about <laughs> West. the AFC West. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you got? Well, Nelson, I don't know, baby. <laughs> Actually, I do know. I took so long with the other divisions, I figured I'd keep it quick. I am going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. Buy him. <laughs> Buy him. Sims, try and do your sexiest voice in this as you make this pick. Oh, okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I like that little salt and pepper you got in your hair. Over there. <laughs> you turned into a southern bell. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> but I'm going with the Oakland Raiders, because once you go black, and silver, you never go back. And shiver. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going the Raiders. I am. I'm going with the Raiders. That's good. I um, I worry about Kansas City. I just I, I worry about the defense in general. I worry about Oakland's defense as well. But you know, um, Oakland's defense has a guy named Derek Carr to help them out with put points on the board. I just don't know if Kansas City can emulate the magic of last year. Like, are we just going to let everybody move the ball between the twenties and then have a good red zone defense and depend on a you know, Eric Berry or a Marcus Tyree Peters kill. pick six or a Tyree Kill punt return or a Tyree Kill reverse where he makes nine people miss and runs for 80 yards. So that scares me. I so just realized that I, like, shit on the Chiefs a few weeks ago, and now I'm picking them. You're picking them again, yeah. yeah that's all right. You're that's all what happens. You're all fucked up. I was going to guess the wild cards that you were going to go. I'm really I'm really in trouble with the wild cards. In the, in the, it's uh, tough. I'm it changing is. one even though I wrote it down. I'm, I'm, oh. cha I'm, like, sitting here going through schedules as we're looking going, man, maybe I should change this one. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I, My wild card, okay, I'm picking the Steelers. <laughs> Fuck your wild cards. I'm going with the Steelers as one of them, okay? Yeah. And I figured you picked the Chiefs for the other. Nope. Oh. Nope. I didn't do the it. The Chiefs missed the playoffs. I'm losing. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yes. Who you want to guess my other one? Uh, No. I really was close to going with Jay Cutler and the Miami Dolphins. Okay, who you I do think they look good. Okay. But I am going, dun, dun, dun. look at Gabe. I love this Gabe. I can't wait to hear this. Dun, dun, dun. Gabe, I'm picking. Did you see me? Denver Broncos. So am I. Mm. Are you kidding me? I picked the Denver Broncos yeah. and the Miami Dolphins. You picked the Dolphins. <laughs> Good for you. I Honestly, I'm not going to lie. It was between Dolphins and Texans, mm -hmm. and I was really split, and I apparently have a file that I can't edit. So I couldn't edit Texans out earlier mm, to right. put Dolphins in, but Broncos and Dolphins. Yeah, the Dolphins went ten and six without J like with with like a, a Ryan defense. Ryan Tannehill really, and Matt Moore and and all that stuff. Sporadic and running I game. I think that they're going to be really good. I think Gase is a good coach. Yeah, so I'm going Patriots, Steelers, Titans, Chiefs, and the wild cards are going to be Broncos and Dolphins. Yep. So I do not have the Raiders. 
and I do not have the Texans, even though I really like the Texans' yeah. defense. I really Texans like the will Texans have the number one too. defense again, but I just think their offensive line in the hurricane is going to be crazy. A little scary. I know. Uh, that was that was tough. So you went, you went Patriots, Ravens, Titans, Raiders, Broncos. Who was the other one? Steelers. Steelers. Yeah. So you don't have the Chiefs making the playoffs at all? I don't have the Chiefs making the playoffs. Nope. Fucking A. I know. I just figured that. I, I went through it. And you have the Ravens in. I have the Ravens in, yeah. And the Dolphins were certainly one of those teams I thought about. Maybe I wasn't sure. I was like, man, do I want to go to Denver or Miami as that wild card team? All right. I'm going to go with Trevor Simeon. That improved offensive line, and I still think that defense is special. So I'm going to choose them, yes. All right, let's do the big predictions here, Sexy. <sighs> Now that we Only are. thing I'm disappointed about <laughs> myself in this, it's my podcast. Shut your ass. <laughs> Only thing I'm mad, I didn't really deep dive myself. I just went from what teams do I think are the best. Here's what we're going to do. Usually You're I go through my. You're upset I, that uh, yeah. we're doing this a week early. I'm going to give you the whole week. Okay. Next Wednesday, right. if you'd like to make any changes, I can do that. You can make changes. Okay, thanks. But you need to let me know ahead of time. Don't tell me what the changes are. Okay, to, and then we will. We'll okay, do I'll do it. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Cool. That's exactly what it reminded me of. <laughs> thanks, Ed. Like okay, Ed. Well, that's permission. literally the conversation since I had. He goes, "Can we do something?" And I go, "Just do it." All right, okay. go ahead. Can I go back now? Yeah, we want to change next Wednesday. <laughs> now that we are through the door, let's just take the clothes off and get these Super Bowl picks in. Mm. We have our playoff teams. Who is going to win it all? All right, so Super Bowl matchup. I am going Patriots-Seahawks. Rematch of, was that three years ago, two years ago? Yeah. Who's that's, your- that's the matchup. I mean, that's it's the Patriots, okay? Yes. That is the decision. I'm I've, I'm literally, in, as we've been sitting here, I've been going back. Is it going to be the Patriots versus the Giants or the Patriots versus the Seahawks? That's all I've been sitting here. So okay. since you're going Seahawks, I'll go Giants. I'm not going to change that for now. So right now, it's Patriots, Seahawks, Patriots, Giants. That won't change. I promise you that. All right, I dig it. For next Wednesday. And and the winner. Who are you picking? Um, the New England Patriots. Me too. Yeah. Tom Brady yeah. wins his fourth Super Bowl MVP. All right. Now we have uh, some awards that Stephen needs to ask us about. It's time to get to the oh baby hardware. Me likey. And I've been waiting for this all day. I could feel it down in my plums. Oh. In my plums. <laughs> Sims, do you know what that's from? No. Uh, you ever see Eastbound and Down? Oh, yeah, sure. I could feel it in my plums. Mm. I, I kind of remember that. Take I don't a know. bite and have the juice <laughs> drip down my chin. <laughs> Light bluish hue. Bluish hue. <laughs> Shut up. Get on track. Uh, MVP is where we begin. Sims, who are you picking? My MVP, I'm going Russell Wilson. I'm going Tom Brady. You like okay. skinny Russ, don't you? It was it's it's twelve, twelve or three. That's all it is. It's Rogers, Brady, or Wilson for my money. I don't think any other positions winning in this day and age. It's, they might as well just call it the quarterback award. It is. That's it's why I MVP. try to get creative, and I went. No, I, I want to be right. Right. It's a quarterback. I know. That's what happens. This next one is not for the. You want to pick one? You got anybody? I uh, told you twelve, twelve, three theory sits well. It's pretty good. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like it. Yeah. Okay. Defensive. Player of the year. Who is oh, gonna bring it. I love that every time you talk, the music comes on. <laughs> you can't hear. It, <laughs> I can't hear. I'm flying blind. Or, uh, you yeah. go defensive player of the year first. Bet you picks Bob Miller. I am. Yeah, what a loser. I know. <laughs> 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 I knew that was happening. Are you uh, gonna pick Bob Miller too, though? No. Oh. I am going Daniel Hunter. Oh. You've been on that for a while. I like Out it. of yeah. Lefko Field, he yes. goes. <laughs> Daniel Daniel Hunter, I think, is going to have a 16-sack season for the Vikings. That's why I have them winning the NFC North. And I want to be a little bit different. And okay. I think he's going to come in there and kick some ass. I like it the way your brain works. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Switch that up. <laughs> <laughs> the left coaster is about to climax with the mm. final award of oh. Rookie of the Year. Mm. Give him a clean in. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you picking? It's a three-man race for me. Okay. Okay. None of the quarterbacks, even though Deshaun Kaiser's, just Kaiser's starting, it'll be too bumpy in Cleveland for okay. me to go that, right? It's Fournette, McCaffrey, Miles Garrett for me. Okay. It's one of those three. And who are you picking? I'm picking McCaffrey. He's the great white hope. He's a white boy supreme for sure. Yep. 
And I do think they're going to feature the offense around him. I think his numbers will he be looks phenomenal. looks amazing in the preseason. Yeah. Thought about all those guys, too. Yeah. Going out of Lefko Field. Who did it? Kareem Hunt. Oh, he, he, I thought about him, too, though. I I'm did. thinking out yeah. of those guys that you named, mm -hmm. Jacksonville's going to suck. Cleveland's going to suck. Mm -hmm. uh, Carolina, miss or hit or miss. The Chiefs will be in the playoff hunt. No pun ah. intended. He will be starting. He will be the guy. Andy Reid's offenses are always good with, with running backs. They I are. think Kareem Hunt is a 1,000-yard rusher, and I think he is the rookie of the year. That's a good pick, bro. I like that. Thank you. He did. He did. He crossed my mind. No, no doubt about it. How good does it feel to have Nelson back in our lives? Oh, my gosh. And merely yeah. just to look at him. I was going to say, your rundown must have been like bare as shit for me to come back on this show. But it was – Nope. No. no. It was more of uh, – I said last week on the podcast – that I were having Steven Nelson on. Yeah, we've been talking about getting you back in here. And it's been did like you a. Know, yeah. You did that on Mondays? Uh, no, last Wednesday. last Wednesday. We got so much shit going on. I don't uh, know what day we talk anymore. So yeah. I looked at, because everyone says preseason doesn't matter, and I know preseason week four. Nelson, I love you. Love you guys. Give me a hug. Okay. Goodbye. Are you going to leave? Did you want to sit on my lap here I'll or listen something? To this. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to download and subscribe on iTunes, and I'm going to leave a five star review telling you guys thank you for having me on the show. Oh, oh great. Nelson's great. the best. All right. Bye, Sam Z. See ya. Um, so, because the, everyone says the preseason doesn't matter, yeah. I wanted to look at, I found, there was a post on Reddit, thank you Reddit, of Super Bowl winners and their preseason records. Uh, what do you think is the most common preseason record since the year 2000 to win a Super Bowl? Three and one. It is. They've won seven. Yeah. How did you know that? Uh, it just seems right. Uh, four and zero oh have won three, two and two four, one and three three. No team has ever won the Super Bowl after going zero oh and four in the preseason. And the current teams that that could happen yeah, to yeah, let's hear that. The Buffalo Bills are currently zero oh and three. The Oakland Raiders are currently zero oh and three. And the Atlanta Falcons are currently 0-3. Yeah. So if the Falcons or Raiders go 0-4, I don't know how relevant this is, but no Super Bowl team in the last 16 years has gone 0-4. They can, I don't look at any of those teams as being possible to win the Super Bowl. Patriots so. last year went 3-1. and one. Right. Broncos last year went 3-1. and one. Um and then the Patriots the year before that went two and two. Seahawks went four and zero. Oh. I just thought that was interesting. You got to get some wins under your belt. I don't care what you are. It gives you just a little positive vibe. It, it, I don't care even if the veterans feel better, the coaching staff feels better, the owner feels better. Just to go into the season, go, hey, we know what it feels like to win. Like we can win in this team. We got, we know that. So Cowboys finished the preseason three and one. Yep. Uh, and the other teams right now that are three and zero. Oh, the Ravens and Browns are three and zero. Yep. The Broncos are three and zero, and the Seahawks are three and zero. Yeah. I don't know if it's relevant. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's kind of like that turnover thing, the margin that we were talking about uh, during the season. Uh, by the way, I want to do a little bit of quick things with betting. I want you to tell me the what you think the over under is for wins for these teams. These are the, the these are the ones that I think I'm going to bet, okay. and then we're going to get to iTunes comments. Patriots, what do you think their over-under is? Their over-under for the season? For wins. 13. It's 12 and a half. Okay. These are the, let me just say, these are the bets that I think I'm going to make. Yep. I think I'm going to bet over on the Patriots at 12 and a half. The Chiefs, their over-under is nine. I think they're going over. So I would bet the over on the Chiefs. I am I am really going to bet the Jacksonville under. So Vegas is expecting the Chiefs to fall off. That's yes, funny. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Jaguars over under right now is six and a half. They suck. I am betting the under on Jackson. Yeah, I just can't see them saying they're going to win seven games. What do you think the over under is for Tennessee? How many games do you think they're going to win? I think Tennessee is going to be like that nine and seven, ten and six type of team. Eight their, and a half. Their over under is eight and a half. Yeah. I want to bet the over under. Right. I want to bet the over for Tennessee. Yep. And then I was going to bet the Texans over eight and a half, but there's too much stuff going on. Yes, there is. So I really like the Patriots, the Chiefs, and the Tennessee and the over and Jacksonville and the under. Those are my four bets that I like the most. Pretty good. Now let I'm me, not in crazy with the Chiefs one though. You're really off on that. I just I, they scare me, man. They scare me when right, I see no, Russell Wilson throwing 200 bet. yards in the first half and running around like so. You're nobody so the out two there. teams I like, the Chiefs and the Vikings. You're a little bit scared, right? Well, now. but I got the Vikings with you. I'm yeah, not, I picked the Vikings to win the division. Uh, four teams that I'm curious what you think that I thought their lines were a little bit weird. Yeah, how many games do you think the Saints win? Well, you know me. I think they're going to be good. I think the Saints are going to be like a 10 and 6, 11 and 5 type team. Their over under is 8.5. Yeah, so I if would you're take out that. there and you want to bet and you want to take a Sims flyer on the Saints, betting alert, look into it. 
What do you think the over-under is for the Giants? Nine. It's eight and a half. Wow. Low. Yeah, very low. That's another one that I really like. Yes, I do I too. would bet the over on the Giants. I do but too. But again, we talked about it. The NFC East, they're going to kick each other's ass. Yeah. They play the NFC West, and they play the AFC West. It's yeah. not easy. Not easy. Ravens, what do you think the over-under is? Ravens, I would think, is probably at eight and a half as well. Eight and a half. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I mean... <laughs> Only thing that's qu- I question with the Ravens is just Joe Flacco. I'm a little concerned about that, but I'm in love with their team right now. I really am, even despite their injuries. So that could be a nice little over under. I wouldn't feel comfortable just yeah. because Flacco's back injury, but yeah. I knew you liked them. Mm-hmm. And the last one, Cowboys. Cowboys, I'm going to say, is at nine and a half. It's eight and a half. Wow. Cowboys are a scary team. I don't know, just don't think they're going to walk out there and just you know repeat what they did last year. That that, that that's tough to do. Thirteen and three. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. Yeah, I'm not so the defense bets is that, scary, too. So the bets, if you're going to go to Vegas or do this on some form of app, Patriots over 12.5, Jacksonville under uh, 6.5, Tennessee over 8.5, Saints over 8.5, Giants over 8.5. You disagreed with me. I like Chiefs in the over. Mm-hmm. And then Ravens and Cowboys at your own discretion. Yep. But wanna, that's, that's some of our bets. I want to pull out, like, Kansas City. All right, we're going to get okay. to iTunes comments. Okay, go but ahead. Let me hear Do what it. you're going to say. No, just, I'm looking at Kansas City's, you know. Uh, it ain't easy. It's not easy. But but honestly, look at any schedule in the NFL right now. Yep. It looks really hard. Yeah, you're right. All right, let's get to iTunes comments. Let's crank out some of the really good ones, and this is going to be a long podcast. Holy shit. Uh, MCRTM, outstanding. The only podcast I listen to on a consistent basis, I heard Sims on the DA show, and I've been hooked ever since. Thanks, MCRTM. Spencer Loves Dakota, best podcast out there. Been listening since episode one. Hell yeah, thank yeah. you. What effect do you think Edelman's injury will have on the Patriots season? What do you guys think has to happen that they definitely will not make the Super Bowl? We talked about this on Monday. Yeah. We think they're going to be fine, yep. and it's going to take Brady, Gronk, and Edelman to not be there. All be, have to be hurt for them not to get the Super Bowl. they got plenty of guys to take that rollover. Uh, best sports podcast ever, J.D. Onkin. Chris Sims is the man. Breaks down every player you've never heard of, so of course the analysts on the guys that you know are on point. I love Chris Sims so much that I made Matt Sims my quarterback, too, on Facebook. Falcons in Madden. Yes! Woohoo! So he doesn't like, need to make the team. Yeah, come on, Matt Schaub. Made... Just a high ankle sprain. It's all masking. I, I mean that jokingly and halfway serious. <laughs> but also kind of serious. Uh, this one was really great. Uh, this one was good. Spitman209. Uh, am I wrong in remembering that you guys did a 49ers show back in the day? Either way, y'all bring a refreshing take. That was definitely because we used to do 49ers videos. We used to blow the 49ers all the time. Bleacher Report has changed where we used to do videos for every team, right. and now we don't. Uh, bring a refreshing take. Love that y'all come from players' perspective and have passion. You believe in keep on keeping on. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, all right. This these ones always make me laugh when all of a sudden you you begin to realize the impact on people. Dave Malazzo and Dom keep up the good work. Dave Malazzo. Do you know who that is? I think. Well, go ahead. Let me hear this. Hey, fellas, two weeks away from football starting. Could be more excited. Oh, he wants us to make prop bets for him. So let's do Sims makes you more money prop <laughs> bets. Uh, more yards from scrimmage. Scrimmage. Le'Veon Bell or David Johnson. David Johnson. Uh, Odell more catches than Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown will get more catches. So what's happening here is bet on the guys that are not holding out. <laughs> uh, Matthew well, Stafford. Get, yes, go ahead. T- touchdowns. Matthew Stafford or Aaron Rodgers? Oh, Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Uh, receiving yards. Amari Cooper or Julio Jones? <sighs> I'm going to go with Amari Cooper. Wow. Yes. Um, also, if you guys wouldn't mind giving me and my future wife a shout out, we're getting married in two weeks and we both listen to the podcast like it's religion. Keep doing your thing, gentlemen. I want to hear you guys on the radio sometimes too soon. Dom and Steph. Dom. So it was Dom Malazzo. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I know what Dave Malazzo. I thought maybe it was him. He but actually him says and his wife listen all the time. But what up, Dom? That's and, amazing. And Steph. What, Steph. You know, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that we get you. I hope that Steven Nelson just got you in the mood. Congratulations for that wedding. I mean, get it done, okay? Congratulations. Get her done. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> By the way, guys, uh, submit a five star iTunes review. And as I'm doing right now, we will make sure to read it on the podcast. As you know, Josh isn't here, and this podcast is going long. I like his what his girl listens to it, too. That's cool. It's very cool. Yes. Favorite podcast to listen to without a doubt Coca Cola 29. Wow. I love this podcast. It's my favorite one to listen to. I look forward to it every week. It's the bomb diggity. Yeah. So Coca Cola 29 no is doubt. white. 
Uh, I love how it's so free-flowing and talking about topics besides football. You guys turn me into a bigger NFL fan. You have great chemistry. Question, why does producer Josh always worry about the darn podcast time? Just let it breathe. Also, you guys need to bring Cameron Jordan from the Saints. It would be a great episode. I know everyone love it, but keep it up because you guys are amazing. You know, that's uh, it's actually hilarious that he's thinking of that because one of the things I was thinking for like a show idea actually over the, over the week is like, like superstars in the NFL that we need to let everybody know is a superstar. And he would be one of those guys. Like Cam Jordan is one of the best defensive ends in football, mm. but because he's not like super fast or super strong, like he doesn't have that one trait that we can jump yes. onto. Nobody cares about him, but he would be like one of those guys. I would love to go like him, Michael Bennett, all those type of guys that are just amazing players that don't get enough highlights or notoriety. Uh, here we got someone challenging you. Dave Ocala, Best Football you wanna, Podcast. You want to challenge this? I've been listening to about a year and look forward to each new podcast. You talk on football is great, but I'll be honest. I appreciate the discussions about health, politics, and racial equality as well. Thanks for switching to two a week. Truly enjoy. Well, guess what? You're about to get three. As a Dolphins fan, I want to ask what your take is on the receiving core as well as I think they would beat Sims's Giants four-man relay. Kenny Stills, Devontae Parker, Jakeem Grant, and Xavier Howard would beat the Giants four people Ooh. keep up the fantastic work i like it that's good stuff i like a little challenge there i don't think so though Devonte parker fast but he's not super it's fast. like four four xavian howard again fast kenny stills is the fastest guy out of that and who's the other one he said there who am i missing Jakeem grant Jakeem he is, grant. Fast, he is fast that i mean listen that'll be that'll be fun to watch certainly but man i don't know just just in my years around the league though that giant team right now i gotta think of some other teams but man that's tough to beat odell Janoris, uh, who else did we say? Odell Janoris, DRC, who might be the fastest of all of them, Dominique Rogers Camardi. And then I threw, I think, Eli Apple in there. So right. that, that's tough. That, I don't uh, know. Dan, NY Transplant in San Diego, speaking of the Giants, best NFL pod. Love the candid takes and Sims Insider info. The podcast cuts through the weeds and discusses what important is at times. Right. I couldn't agree more with your take on Odell's contract, especially with the scare. How can the Giles pull it off? They only have $4.6 million in cap space. Oh, the Giles are in a tough spot. Giants. I don't mean the Giles. I don't know how. Did I say it. Giles? Yes, you did. You've been saying lots of I am so like, bad at reading iTunes comments. Kid can't even read. Um, how do they do it? How do they do what? Get this Odell deal done. They can always find creative ways to do it. Uh, we'll see. There could be some surprise cuts that make a little room happen this year, whatever yeah. it may be. But, uh, I, yeah, I would imagine that they're hamstrung a, a little bit for cash in general. So uh, I don't know if it's something where they give them the remainder of the cap for this year and then everything starts next year. Right. Uh, I, it's it, it's tricky how they can allot money, right? But they can get it done. Right. He can. They can guarantee him $50 million here in a week and just be like, well, we're going to pay you that $50 million over the next two years. Thank you, 61290 Blue, for commenting. He asked about Stan Stafford contract we did that uh J jernson lefko is an outstanding host and sims insight is great i was a student at ku at the same time sims was at ut thrashing my jayhawks what did you think of lawrence kansas and ku oh i and I, i've announced some games there it's a very pretty area ku is a cool school it really is it's just so basketball oriented it's going to be hard to ever get that football team going believe i made one of my first starts ever there at ku cold day um Threw a few bombs out there, but it's a really pretty campus. Um, nice little football stadium. Yeah. And I forget the name of the gym. What is it? The Lawrence or uh, uh, it's something like that. Fog that. Allen. Hey, that's what it is. I mean, that's, you know. It's legendary. It, it's it's like Notre Dame-ish for football, right, to, to see a, a basketball court like Let's that. Let's stick with some college questions for you because this happens every iTunes comments. Number one, Iowa dirt ball. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I love the players' focus. Sims, I remember being nine and watching you wreck the Iowa State team in 2002, the last time they were in a joke, and you crushed my spirits. Yeah. But I forgive you. Okay. Anyway, my question is, Oh, and so that was a big game, I guess. Well, that was the year of Seneca Wallace. Seneca Wallace. Right? They were Shit, all talking he about the great. Heisman. And then he had a playoffs in Oklahoma back to back and that put it he back into reality. Shot. Right. Question is how much can the the how much better can the Ravens be with Flacco than they are without him? I like the guy a lot, but he's been in a nasty downswing for four years and no consistency at OC. I don't think it's getting better. Yeah, I, those are the things that scare you in general. I do think the offense is gonna be better this year with Marty Morningweg having his full off season to put the stamp on it. Greg Roman is the other thing I'm excited about. I don't like Greg Roman necessarily as an offensive coordinator, but when he's your run game coordinator I, coordinator 
creator. I like that because he's very creative in the run game. Them together could do some good things. Flacco is scary. There's no doubt about it. But listen, he also played last year. It was his first year back from tearing his ACL. So he was a little rusty early in the year, and he was a little scared of his knee. He told me that personally when I covered one of the Ravens games. As the year went on, he got better and better, and that's why they made a little bit of a late playoff run. The Ravens just have so many other things that I'm excited about. That's what I, I mean. Yeah. I love watching teams just whoop the shit out of other teams on film, and you can count Ravens on that from Baltimore. Left. Right. Dan Ward, 1994, very complimentary. He said that the Sims family is one of his favorite sports families. Quick questions you. for you. Uh, Vi, uh, in an earlier episode, you thought Vince Young would be an excellent wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Do you think Young was part of the fake QB phenomenon you discussed? Ooh, uh, a little bit. That's actually a, a really good question because this I, I've talked about this with a few of my friends. A little bit. This is where Vince, though, takes it a step up from like the fake quarterbacks I've talked about, whether it be a Tim Tebow or a Bortles or even use Josh Dobbs. The one thing Vince has over those guys, he's – like an elite superstar type athlete. Mm-hmm. Vince was not a natural thrower, but he was a good enough athlete to figure out, hmm, if I do it like this, I can be consistent so and good. So he's the super fake QB. He kind of is the super fake QB in my eyes. But when he got it going and he finally oh. figured it out, his it wasn't orthodox. Like he kind of k- kept low. His elbow was low. He got under the ball. Remember when he beat the Giants by himself that one game? That shit was awesome. But he, listen, he was a freak of nature, man. Right, one of the go. freakiest guys I was ever around. This is uh, Farty Marty at a party oh farty marty at a party should the 49ers tank to get josh rosen or try to sign kirk cousins next season and which qb is the best prospect for kyle's offense okay well they're not tanking i can tell you that that's not not gonna happen no and it's your first year as a head coach so he wants to put his mark the niners are going to beat more teams than people think they really are i i I think the niners can be a six and ten seven and nine pain in the ass for a lot of people you look at their roster you go oh they got a little more talent than you think they've been coached by bad coaches the last few years um they're not going to tank I do think Kirk Cousins is still the favorite to be there in Washington. Mm. I wouldn't think in year two of Kyle's career that he wants to go backtrack to get a rookie quarterback. No. But my eyes, Josh Allen, the kid from Wyoming, to me, I haven't like watched film of all these guys yet. But when I watch crossover film, he, pops. he, he looked like Troy Aikman, but faster. That's what it looked like to me. There, Holy you like shit. that one? Yeah. That was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going, speaking of bad coaches, Paul Dabb called us the most woke NFL podcast ever, said, I still hate Mark Tressman as a Bears fan with a burning passion. Where does he rank on your worst coaches in NFL history, and can you give me some of the worst coaches of all time? Oh, man, I wish I could have had some fun Tom with Tom Sula's up there. Tom, not yeah. not in terms of worst. In terms of worst, it was just had one of the worst years. Ever. I I know, I know, and you know, I, if I was going to further that too, an old coach that I had who's the D coordinator of the Cowboys now, Rod Marinelli. Right, they went zero sixteen for a season. That yes. was a horrible year, uh, man. But the bad coaches, like I don't want to call Tom Zula or Marinelli bad coaches because of that, because they're Who's amazing bad? position coaches. Yes, they're amazing there. Um, Chip, Cowell. what was the first part of that though? Tressman. Tressman, yeah, Tressman again. Just in over his head as a head coach in general. I think that's the biggest thing. you got to remember, though, give Trestman a little credit. He was part of those awesome Raider offenses with Rich Gannon. Who's coming to mind right now when you're thinking of worst coaches? Worst coaches. Gosh. I've had some bad ones in my day, man. Um, Just as far as, like. Just give me one. (sighs) All right. The answer is Rich Kotite. Rich Kotite's certainly bad. I know I wanted to give you more creative ones than that. I wanted to get into like some personal ones. Let me dive into that next week. Okay. I can come up with some guys that I know. I can... Paul Dab, we will answer that next week. Right. Uh, Fricht, uh, 15474, been listening since episode 40. Love the effort, keeping us informed. What are your favorite nicknames for specific parts of a team like the New York Sack Exchange? Oh, okay. Oh, you know, uh, that is a good one, too. The purple people eaters was pretty amazing. Back Steel Curtain. To, yep, Steel Curtain. Um, I know mine. My favorite unit is the Buffalo Bills offensive line for O.J. Simpson, the Electric Company. I thought it was the most creative. They were called the Electric Company because they let the juice loose. See, and I, I just like thought that was awesome. That is kind of good. Uh, I, and I'm, these ones are so tough on me right off the spot, I, off the top of my head. I wish I just would have had a little – I could have given you some creative answers to this, these ones. Yeah, you're bad at this. I know I am. Really bad. All right. Well, we'll get to that also next week. <laughs> what do you say? The Monsters of the Midway, oh, Gabe yeah. is saying. That's a good one. There's no a doubt. million. Right. But, yeah, we'll get to that next week. Is there week. any good recent ones, though? Remember we liked the cold front Buffalo, but, but it didn't we did happen. That. We named that, the cold yeah, front. Yeah, and then it ended up not being good at all. <laughs> well, they had a bad year. 
Uh, uh, the no-fly zone in Denver right okay. now. That's a good one. Um, all right. Uh, we have one that's hated. Uh, A-N-F-G-P-G, no love. Love you guys, but you guys always hate on Green Bay. I'm not a fan. I get not a fan of being a fan of the coaches. Um, Sims, you also said you didn't see make moves to get better, but they actually sign more free agents than they usually do. Yeah, they send a few more, certainly. I just look at the J.C. Treader, T.J. Lang as big losses to the top-tier offensive linemen in football. I've seen a lot of people say that Jari Evans is going to be a good enough replacement. Yeah, Jari's good. He is. Um, I, I do. I just There's too many question marks for me. I don't like to hate on Green Bay because it's my favorite player. Um, but, yeah, I just get frustrated with the system. Is there a trade going down? No, but a BR app. Number uh, Josh Allen on his favorite NFL team. It would be a dream come true to play for the 49ers. <laughs> That's incredible. That's hilarious. The um, universe – is funny. Josh Allen will be the quarterback for the 49ers. That's what that means. Yeah. It's it's a uh, and also the Green Bay thing. I think what other other things that worry me again. I've had issues with big people in the middle of the defense for the last few years. Kenny Clark was okay last year. This year he's got to play and he's got to he play great. really good. So yes, Mike Daniels is great, but they don't have a lot of depth on the D line. No, and then we haven't really seen great shutdown corner play again out of like Demarius Randall or Quentin Ra- Quentin Rollins. Demarius has looked better this preseason, so I might be eating a lot of my words with this Green Bay thing. Mm. I'm very aware of that. JTD 1988. This this is a podcast game changer. Thank you, man. A uh, question about the Raiders. The defense is scary, not good scary. A lot of linebacker issues. Michael Kendricks is on the blocks. Sorry, Lefko. Would that make sense? Would it be a good fit? That would be amazing. I, I don't know. I don't really get what's going on with Michael Kendricks. I've told you. He's other than Fletcher Howie Cox. Ke- Howie uh, Roseman has a trading problem. I, I mean, I just, to me, I, don't, I, don't, I want to know what Jim Schwartz is doing. Why isn't he like, on the table for him? Um, but, yes, I thought about Michael Kendricks. He'd be perfect in that Seattle scheme in Oakland. Yes. I really thought Kansas City was going to make a play for him over a Reggie Ragland. Mm. I thought that would be the guy they would go after uh, just because he has a little more three-down value than a Reggie Ragland. All right, last two. Guys, thank you so much again. Leave a five-star review on iTunes. As you're seeing right now, I read them all. Gabe what is stretching. That's how long this podcast you has You know been. what? They fucking deserve it. Good. These guys are awesome. Uh, these last two are a little <laughs> bit longer, and they're great. Timmy and Philly. Love the podcast, guys. Listen every week. I listen to Lefko every day because I listen to his other Philly podcast, Crossing Broadcast. It's awesome. Thank you for listening to me that much. That's insane. <laughs> uh, I grew up in China before moving to Philly. All the games were previously being broadcasted on a small internet platform for free, and only thousands watched. Remember, we talked about this being broadcast in Philly. Yep. I mean, in China. My sports-loving friends in China, they only care they care about the Super Bowl, but they can only name about five guys in the entire league. It's a 12-hour time difference. It's really hard. Sundays are nearly impossible. Also, I saw Russell Wilson's Instagram story when he visited Shanghai, his hometown, and no one around recognized him at all. Meanwhile, Steph Curry showed up, and three blocks around the vent were completely blocked off and occupied, and you couldn't go anywhere. Tells you how far behind they are. Final question for Sims. I'm with you on the Ezekiel bread, rice, and black bean diet, but which veggie protein shake do you recommend that doesn't taste like chalk? No problem. I got you. Orgains, okay? O R G A I N S. You want Orgains? Get the chocolate one. They're I don't at Whole think Foods. there's an S. I think it's Orgain. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I got one in my bag. Okay. But yes, should I get it out and no. use it as a sponsor? Just, no. We don't, they're not sponsoring us. They don't get any more. <laughs> Orgain, though, is the one to go with. Vegan protein shake. Tastes really good. Get the chocolate. It's a little expensive, but I mean, huh, life and health are inexpensive and death. I don't know. Let's take a choice there. I go with life and health and a little expensive. You know okay. what? You know what, Orgain? We're yeah. going to get you. Okay. We're going to get you as a sponsor. I'm excited. I, I, the what? Sims family goes through them. I drink two to three a day. My little girl drinks two or three a day. This is my favorite one. This is the last one. TJ, a.k.a. FreakShowMagic.com, and it's Chris Sims as a boss, and it is a story. Oh. I love you, Lefko and company, but Sims is my favorite. I grew up a diehard, diehard Giants fan, and watching the Bucks. I hoped you have as much success as your dad. Sadly, it didn't happen as well. I want to share a quick story that happened on December twenty second, 2016, between Sims and myself. I live in Manhattan. I got family in Connecticut. And I was going on a train with my sister to go home for the holidays. I board the train. It's packed. Every seat is taken. So we stand. Train starts to move and I'm scanning for seats. Suddenly I see the top of someone's head with bleach blonde hair and immediately I go, oh my God. 
I turn to my sister and I go, that dude's top of the head looks like Chris Sims. <laughs> but the I train was this. quiet enough where you heard your name and you popped your head up from the phone and said, hey, I immediately went full fangirl and tried to smoothly ask for a photograph. Right. I was so far away that you could barely hear what I said and I ended up pantomiming camera, camera. Finally, we got on the same page, and I came over for a photo. At the moment, no one on the train knew what was going on except for you and I, and we, I was trying to keep your privacy so that you could relax. Eventually, we were going to take a photo, but you were sitting in a three-person seat by the window, so you both had to awkwardly ask people to get up so you can get out of the way. The middle lady did not know why I wanted a photo with you. <laughs> she didn't move, so you uncomfortably leaned over her, and we got a nice picture together together after the picture i wanted to have a conversation with you about the giants and everything but um because i wanted to work at bleacher but all that i had to refrain because i didn't want to be one of those clingy fans talking your ear off my question is what is the best way to approach a famous person you're famous <laughs> when you want a picture or have a conversation is it best to leave them alone how bad is it when you blow someone's cover and other fans aren't around thanks for being cool about taking a photo and if i see you next time that's all of my questions also let me know i should talk about bleacher report getting a job just kidding but seriously let me know <laughs> thanks, like tj it. so I, what do you I, think i think i i do remember this first of all uh and um she was she was fine. I do. I think she she was with her brother. Is that who she said she no, was with? No, it's a guy. Oh, it was the guy was with the sister. sister. I Sorry. Just told you. Well, I know, but I wasn't sure which one was which. There, you, you might have no, said he or she. No, it was a guy she, with yes. the sister. I remember this though totally. TJ, aka FreakshowMagic.com. He came over. He said hello to me. Yes, we took the picture. Does that happen to you a lot? Uh, it happens. You know, I don't know, a little. Just maybe once a week, really. Okay. Um, there's no. Just once a week. But there's no way to uh, uh, approach anybody. Yeah. Okay. Don't blow up somebody's spot if it's publicly. I think the best way to do it though uh, is if you come up to somebody that's a lot more famous than me because I don't think I'm really that famous is the fact that just go up to them quietly when they kind of get away from the crowd in case some people don't know them and you don't want to blow up their spot and then you just go hey big fan you know nice to meet you that's Great. what you do i do right Great. that's what i do too. i just wanted to meet you it's an, i'm really just wanted to shake your hand i'm a big fan it actually catches and people you, by surprise more and then you know do you mind taking a picture real quick this guy did it extremely respectful i, I really truly think i remember exactly Free who he is magic.com um i thought it was his girlfriend he was with uh, but but either way, he was a good dude, and he wasn't too. Uh, what do I want to say? He didn't butt in too much. He was awesome. Fine. All right, guys, thank you so much. As always, thank you to all the production staff staying for easily the longest podcast we've ever had. Holy shit! You shitballs, heard our divisional. Batman. You heard our Super Bowl picks. You heard our awards. If Sims ends up changing any of them, it will be happening on Wednesday. But remember, next week, three freaking podcasts. Mon Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We are officially getting going. Sims and Lefko, ready for the season, ready to take your throat, throw it against the wall. Let's and go. And shove football knowledge down your face. Uh, 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 uh. For Sims. Peace out, homies. They want you to shut the hell I up know. and end this podcast. For Fendrick, for Lefko, love you guys. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>